Hello everyone, my name is Tommy Tornroos and I work with the software company Gearsprout. In this video we would like to show you some basic uses and functionality for our new software application Sprout Converter. This application is really great for anyone who has transferred their home videos and movies such as VHS tapes, Hi8 tapes, and mini DVs and they want to remove video distortion, noise, blank spaces, and video static. We're going to go ahead and get started by showing you how it works. Let's open up some video examples and for a video like this which has you know good video and then moves into some static in a moment right around there and then we have a blank space for a while and then we have good video again our software application is really great to remove that stuff so let's go ahead and bring it in and show you how it works we can see here in the playhead that we can press play and watch the video we can do frame by frame viewing and watch it that way then, uh, to output it, we'd like to determine the video quality first. Now, for me, I always want the video quality to be as high as possible, so let's go up to high. And encoding passes, it's fine with one right now. You can definitely do two if you'd like to have a better view. Um, compression type, I'd like to keep the same as original. Now, if you'd like to change it, you're welcome to do so, but if you don't know much about compression types, you should always keep it same as original. Output format, same thing. We're going to keep it the same as the original file and you can also actually export your file to um, an iPad, iPhone, many different types of Apple devices by clicking here and choosing one there as well. But for now we're just doing the same type of output file. Output location is being uh, able to determine if you want to save it in another hard location such as another hard drive or on your desktop but we're going to save it to the same folder. If you do not check anything it's going to automatically save it to the same folder anyway. Uh, like we said before, if you wanted to save it as an Apple device, you actually have the ability to save it to iTunes here, and then you can even delete the output file. Now, this is the where it gets a little complicated for new users, but it's actually very simple. Under filter settings, you want to make sure enable video cleaning is enabled, and then determine what you want the video distortion setting to be. Now, when you look at the video here, there's actually not that much distortion, because there are long times of good video video uh, playback and then we get into the distortion and see the bad video again so we would actually say that would be low medium video distortion now if you have a file that has like you know a ton of video distortion a large amount then you can set it to high which would mean that like every couple seconds there's distortion but if you set it there the video is going to take a long time to transfer and it's only for really really old tapes or VHS tapes that this would be the case we even have a setting down here, it analyzes the video and says there's a warning because the video distortion setting is set to a high level and you may actually have unwanted video removed that way. So we recommend that you set this to low medium. That's basically the best location if your video looks anything like the one that we have here. For filtering frequency, this determines how often your uh, filter is going to be applied. So if you have a video that has many, many, many little spots of distortion for an old tape that has, you know, distortion every couple seconds, then you could set it to 0.2 seconds if you want. Again, that's going to make the video take a long, longer to process, but it checks the um, distorted frames much more often. If you have a video that you happen to only have a little bit of distortion at the end of it, then you can move it to one second. That would work fine. But the setting that we recommend is 0.6 seconds. So let's keep both of those there. Looks like everything is good to go now at this point. And we're going to go ahead and hit start. Right now, the preview is not available while processing the video. And we can see that it's already filtering and almost done. Now it's going to start writing the file in a moment. Since the size is only 183 megabytes, this is very fast. But if you have a larger file, such as like a 10 or a 20 gigabyte video file, obviously this is going to take longer to process. It's almost done now, and we can see that there's no more remaining after this point. And it's about to be done with the writing process. Now we're done. Good. So now let's go ahead and look at the converted file. The original untitled 06 file is still here. And we can fast forward and see that there's the distortion here, and the full length is 25 seconds. If we look at the new file, which we can tell it's new by the converted zero ending, and we watch that, you can see if we fast forward, the distortion has been removed, and it's now 19 seconds. 